Are you thinking of making the switch from Windows to Linux? Maybe you're sick of Microsoft's weird practices, or the unreliability that Windows often brings these days. Whatever your reasons are, this video will be your guide to make your switch as smooth as possible. Before you install Linux on your computer, it's best to take some time to make a plan. Don't skip this step. The last thing you want is data loss or downtime, and your future self will thank you once your new Linux install is up and running. The first thing I suggest you do is figure out where, physically, you want to install Linux. Take stock of your computer's hardware. Do you have one system drive or multiple? If you have one, you'll likely be removing Windows and installing Linux as your sole operating system. If you have multiple drives, you might want to keep Windows on one drive and Linux on the other. This is called dual booting and allows you to select which operating system you want to boot with when you switch on your computer. In any case, back up all your important files, whether it's to an external hard drive or a cloud storage provider. Even if you won't be erasing your Windows drive, Installing a new operating system carries risk, especially for novice users. Back up your files. Another thing you could do is physically remove the Windows drive from your computer and purchase a new drive for Linux. That way, Windows and your files are safe and you can install Linux on the new drive without as much risk. It's also in this stage that you'll want to take inventory of what applications you use on a day-to-day -day basis and check whether they're supported natively on Linux. If so, that's great, but if not, you'll either need to find out whether you can run your program through a compatibility layer like Wine, or if you need to choose an alternative program. You might also want to check what bookmarks and passwords you need to save from your web browser. Most browsers will let you export bookmarks and passwords, which you can then transfer easily to your new browser on Linux. After you've made these preparations, depending on your levels of understanding, you might want to spend some time to learn a few concepts. For example, to understand that Windows programs are built and packaged differently to programs for Linux, you can't just launch an .exe file in Linux and expect your program to install. Figure out how you'll get the software that you'll need. Maybe they're in your Linux distribution's app center, or the software vendor may offer a Linux download on the website. Understand the different ways Linux software can be packaged. Maybe you're looking for a dev file or a flat pack. Double check all these things before you go any further. At the time of making this video, my Linux catalog isn't very large, but I do plan to make more videos to support you. For the time being, Google and other YouTube videos are your friend. In general, I'd say that with the exception of Microsoft shenanigans, if you struggle to troubleshoot and resolve issues on Windows, you're not quite ready yet. But once you are comfortable and you've resolved any questions that you have, we can move on to the next step. Go to your chosen Linux distro's website and download the installer. It'll come in the form of an ISO file, which is a disk image. We're going to be using Linux Mint for the purposes of this guide. Once your installer image has been downloaded, you need to write it to your USB stick. You can do this your own way, but I recommend using Belena Etcher, which is a free tool that has always worked for me. Select Flash from File and choose your installer ISO. Select your USB drive as the target and click flash. Remember, this will erase your USB drive, so make sure any important files have been copied to somewhere safe. Once your USB drive is ready, we can go ahead and start installing Linux. Insert the USB drive into your target computer and boot from it. To boot from USB drives, we need to interrupt normal startup and get to the boot menu. On most computers, it's one of the F keys, commonly F2, F8, or F12, or the delete key. Most computers have a splash screen that tells you which key to press to access the boot menu, but if not, you might want to Google it. Once you get to the boot menu, select your USB drive with the arrow keys and press enter. We're using Linux Mint, so we're being shown the grub bootloader. I'll make sure Linux Mint is selected and press enter. Most Linux distributions will now boot straight into a friendly desktop environment. This is called the live environment, and it allows you to test your new OS before committing to install it. Keep in mind, you won't be able to install and test many programs. This is mainly to check whether your hardware is working properly. If you want to test more thoroughly, you could set up a virtual machine with VirtualBox.
I'll go ahead and click Install Linux Mint. Eventually you'll get to a screen that asks where you'd like to install the operating system. Hopefully you've planned this already, and if you've backed up your files and want to replace Windows with Linux, you can choose the option that erases the entire disk and installs Linux Mint. If you're installing on another drive, you can select that too. Just make sure you don't select the wrong drive. Take your time and don't rush things. Again, a nice way to do this if you're keeping your Windows drive is just to unplug it while you install Mint. This reduces the risk a lot if you're unsure. After that, Mint will install. Follow the instructions and eventually you'll be asked to reboot. Now that you've rebooted into Linux Mint, it's over to you. Make yourself at home. You can start to copy over the files that you'll need, install your programs and customise your desktop. Things will be in different places, but as I've said before, if you can read and look at icons, you already have the ability to navigate Linux Mint. It's pretty friendly. If you need support, there are always the Linux Mint forums. And you can check out my website, quinstechcorner.net, where I post guides that might help you. In the near future, I'll be making videos to guide you through what comes after the installation. For example, configuring Wine to emulate Windows programs. Or maybe you want to emulate games from consoles. In any case, feel free to leave suggestions in the comments down below if you'd like me to answer a specific question. Thanks for watching this video, I hope it helped, and I'll catch you in the next one.